one. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. It's Puff. It's Steph. We're back on your listening device. Thank you guys very much for hanging out with us. Thanks for uh, making us part of your day, however you're listening. And thank you last night for joining us with uh, Olivia for Tuesdays with Olivia. We had so much fun, like always. We have so much fun, and uh, we would uh, love for you guys to join us next week when we do it all over again. Very much appreciated. Steph, it's Wednesday. You know what that means? Would you rather Wednesday? All right. I have one that I think is really going to make you think. It's really going to make you, like, ponder what the right answer is. All right. Would you rather go into the past and meet your ancestors or go into the future and meet your great great grandchildren. Ooh, that is deep. Go into the past and meet your ancestors, or go into the future and meet your great great grandchildren. Ooh, there's so much to think about because it's like, do you want to see like what you came from, or do you want to see like what comes from you down the line? Yeah. Am I remembered fondly? Am I remembered at all? I think that's I think that's the direction I'd want to go because of that. I'd want to see if they remembered me and if they're anything like me. Like, did I have any influence on my great grandchildren? Oh, this is our great great grandma Steph. Yeah, nobody really talked about her much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about her. Yeah. She must have been pretty boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, she was the crazy dog grandma. <gasps> that's right. She's the one who like died in her house and all of her dogs ate her. Oh, oh, that's the they one. Would, they would never do that to me. How dare you? You said that you wouldn't. You wouldn't mind if they did. I wouldn't mind if they did because I would want them to sustain life if I couldn't feed them because I'm dead. But I don't think they would because they love me. They're animals, Steph, and they would totally eat you. If, Dogs you, are too loyal. You don't think Zoe would? If Zoe got really, really hungry and you're just sitting there on the floor looking like a snack. <laughs> she would not. I know she wouldn't. She would just lay next to me and snuggle me. Like, I don't want to eat her. She's not a grape. <laughs> That's true. Zoe just likes to eat grapes, apparently. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I would go back in time. Really? Well, I have I have uh, kind of alternative motives. I would go back in time and be like, hey, you need to invest in... So if it's like ancestors, we're looking for people. So it'd be like, you need to invest in Wells Fargo or some, you know, in a, a business that's been around for a really long time. You need, oh, the first uh, cars are starting to come out. Yes, invest in, in Henry Ford. Do that. Oh, that's a good, so you could kind of like give them like tips for the future and then that would benefit you. Heck yeah, better. And you know what's going to happen is somewhere down the line between them and me, I'm going to have some screw up of an, of an ancestor that's going to blow it all and like drugs and women. <laughs> and I'll show back up for my time machine and nothing has changed. All I hear is like, oh yeah, your great uncle Thomas like screwed the entire family over. That's like a new story I have to learn. Because I gave, right, I gave them all, it. yeah, I gave them all these investment tips, and they just and they screwed it up. Yeah, stupid. Right, group. you can't trust Uncle Thomas. He's the worst. He never can. But that's what I would probably do. Um, I don't know about going into the future because if you go into the past, you're not going to learn anything about yourself in terms of like what you've done in your life. If you go into the future, you'd be like, oh my god, are you, wait, your great great grandpa Puff. Didn't you, like, burn that entire orphanage down? <laughs> what? When did I do that? Oh, my God. What has happened to me in the future? I Before I died, I burned an orphanage down? Right. I'm, you're I'm, left with so many questions. I'm the black sheep of the family? Um, I'm, like, worse than great un Uncle Thomas? That's how you're remembered, yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> if I can handle that. I, I don't know if I can handle, like, I did something bad or... I wasn't remembered at all. That's That could be the scariest thing. Yeah, that would be hard. They say you die twice. This is like in a song. Once when you die and the second time is the last time anybody mentions your name. You know what song I'm talking about? <laughs> what are you? What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking is about? Is it a country song? 
I no, I think it's like a rap song. It's like they say you die twice. Once is when you die. The second time is when somebody mentions your name. Like the last time your name is said, you die again. <laughs> I'm googling. <laughs> yeah. Crap, what song is it? I think it's like a rap song because I do really like rap music. Is it Macklemore? Glorious? Yes! Yes, yes, yes. That's the one. This is what I googled. <laughs> rap song, you die twice. <laughs> yes. And Macklemore, Glorious. I don't, sorry, I don't really know Macklemore that well. Oh, I love Macklemore. Yeah. So that was my impression. I think I was a little off on the beat, but. You I get, heard you, you die twice. Once when they bury you in the grave, and the second time is the last time that somebody mentions your name. Yes, that's the one. I was a little off on that, but I was close. You were close. <laughs> you were absolutely close. Pretty sure if I burn down an orphanage, it's they're going to be talking about me for a while. I don't. That's true. So you'll live forever. I don't plan on doing that, by the way. So I was going to say, is there something inside of you that's like worried that you're going to commit this act? Of no, arsonry? I just when I was thinking about like a bad thing that I would be remembered for that was about the worst thing I could think of so that's what I said <laughs> like, it was like the worst thing a family like oh we don't talk about him we don't we don't we don't talk about him at all no 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 we talk about your great 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 uncle Thomas who ruined the entire family but uh, not your great great grandpa puff because um, yeah he did that thing yeah we can't talk <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of rap, it's a tremendous transition. It's like you knew this was coming. Kanye West's former bodyguard, Steve Stanullis, gave an interview where he revealed what it was like to protect Kanye. These are fantastic little tidbits. Oh, this is interesting. It, it, it really is interesting because it makes you wonder how many other celebrities act kind of like how him and Kim do. Kanye made his bodyguard walk 10 paces behind him on the street, which made it much harder to keep him safe, right? On his first meeting, Kanye said that I was, this. I'm speaking as Steve, I was supposed to meet him in the studio. When he gets there, we get into the elevator and he's like, aren't you going to push what floor we're going to? I said, I have no idea. It's my first day. Kanye says, so you mean you didn't call ahead to find out where we're supposed to be going? So he's ranting and raving, and I said, bro, we can do this three ways. One, you can tell me what button to press, and now I'll know. Two, you could press the button. I'll see which one you press, and now I'll know. Or three, you could sit here all day and tell me how important your time is, and we're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> wow. And then he goes, that exact conversation happened multiple times. Oh, my gosh. Such a diva. Here's the one that gets me wondering if other celebrities do this. He says Kanye and Kim always called the photographers ahead of time so they'll be ready for them wherever they went. Really? Yes. They do that? So they weren't following them as much as they were just waiting for a call from them saying, hey, we're going to be outside of this, uh, you know, like store. Or we're going to be walking into this hotel. Or we're going to be doing this. And the, and the paparazzi is like waiting for them. And then they complain that they don't have any privacy and that the paparazzi follows them. Right. Wow. Now, I'm sure that not everyone does this. Right. But if Kim and Kanye do it, you have to believe that there's others doing it, too. There must be. Like, if, if you're looking really good and you're, like, really feeling yourself, you're like, yeah, the paparazzi can take pictures of me today. I'm, having, you tell a, them. I'm having a good hair day. I did three sit-ups. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Uh... When he tried to protect Kanye from the paparazzi, Kanye would get angry at him for, quote, being in his shot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? So what was his job? What was he supposed to do? No. He said that Kanye is the neediest, moodiest, and the worst, <laughs> worst tipper of any celebrity he's ever protected. But on the brighter side, he said that Kanye is also the hardest working. Yeah, I know Kanye works hard, but I, I'm not shocked when I hear neediest, moodiest, worst tipper. Oh, maybe worst tipper. Yeah. But medi neediest and moodiest for sure. Hey. Yeah, I guess it's not surprising. They're probably all like that. Hey, man, get out of my shot. I, I, I'm feeling myself today. I called these people. They're supposed to be here. <laughs> Leave me alone, bodyguard. Darn paparazzi. Uh, coming up next, Steph, this one is going to be near and dear to your heart. It looks like baseball is coming back. But have you heard of some of these rules they're implementing? 
Yeah. It's re- it's, is, it, is it really baseball? It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Everyone is going through something right now, and we're all in this together. That's why CBD American Shaman of PA is looking out for you and your health. During this trying time, CBD American Shaman of PA is focused on safety and the needs of their customers. That's why right now they're offering curbside pickup along with home deliveries. Let American Shaman help you manage these stressful times. To find out how to get high-quality CBD products and a free bottle of Shaman Cleansing Gel without even leaving your car or home, visit HempisHealth.com. Hey, honey, how are the taxes going? Pretty good. Let's see. We either get $800 back or we owe four grand. Hmm. I think we should call H&R Block. Let's face it, taxes can be confusing and the laws seem to change every year. Let the professionals at your local H&R Block take the worry out of your tax season. H&R Block in Dillsburg, Newville, Biglerville, Fairfield, and Gettysburg have been owned by the same family for over 50 years. And they've been there for every tax law change along the way. Don't leave money on the table. File your taxes confidently with H&R Block. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. So, Steph, you work with professional baseball team, and it looks like Major League Baseball is uh, on its way back. Hopefully the Senators soon behind it. We'll see. But they released new guidelines drafted by the league for bringing back baseball in early July for a shortened 2020 season. The new restrictions have to be approved by the Players Union, here are the guidelines. This is just weird. And, you know, even before you worked for a, a professional baseball team, you loved baseball, right? You went to games. You used to, you know, in college, I used to scope the baseball guys out in their baseball pants. I know how, I know what you did. So, yep, guilty. <laughs> so uh, you're, just a, you're just a fan of the game and, and everything right. about it. And so am I. Like, here's the thing. I actually don't have a favorite professional baseball team. Do you know that about me? I was just going to say, I don't even think there's a specific team you like. I wouldn't know. I just like watching baseball. I love baseball. I love everything about it. I love being in the park. I love the people. I love the, the, the beer and the concessions. And I like the, the chick on the field doing the games. Like, I, I oh, like I, I, all of it. I just <laughs> like the whole package, right? But I have a feeling that this is going to be odd, to say the least. Uh, here's some, some of the new guidelines. Players will go through daily temperature screenings. The Major League Baseball plans to perform thousands of tests on players, coaches, management, and stadium personnel for COVID-19 on a weekly basis. So you're going to have players test positive. It's just, it is what it is, right? You're going to have managers test positive and you're going to have like a player. Who's your favorite player? Do you have a favorite player? Um... On the Senators or MLB? Just in general. Um, I like Ryan Zimmerman on the All Nationals. Right. So Ryan Zimmerman, he's gonna he if he tests positive, he could be out for two weeks because he tests positive. He, he has, and he might be asymptomatic. Right. Uh, and they're doing temperature screenings, which not everyone has a high fever. Like I just don't that this whole that whole thing bothers me a little bit. But let's move on. Players would have to sanitize their hands each half inning. Oh so, my gosh! So Our fans are gonna get so dry. So they'd run in from the dugout, do the ch- 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 and like do that, and then the next guy ch- 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 and doing that, and like, could you imagine? Like, you're gonna have a trainer, a trainer a guy who went to college, 
to be a professional athletic trainer. Worked his way up. He is a now a major league baseball athletic trainer, and his job will now be squirting Purell on players' hands. <laughs> yep, yep. It's just not gonna like. Can they? Are they allowed to high five each other after these hand sanitizations take place? That ha- you're, you're jumping ahead a little bit. Showers would not be permitted at the stadium after games, so, so these smelly players would have to just jump in their car and go home and shower. They're not allowed to shower. Players not in the lineup would need to sit in auxiliary seating at a social distance and not in the dugout. So the only players that could be in the dugout were players that were actually playing. Oh, my gosh. And then they're just going to, like, sh- like, shun the other ones that aren't good enough to start? Yeah, so they're going to they're gonna have to... Dogs are mad about this. They're going to have to sit. <sighs> hey, stop it, please! <laughs> they're gonna... <laughs> they're gonna have to sit somewhere else like i don't know if it's outside the dugout like in the first row of the stadium because no fans are gonna be there or right, if true. they're gonna be back have to be back in the clubhouse like i don't exactly know how this is all gonna work that sucks that the whole team can't just be together right Ugh. uh <laughs> most essential team personnel would be tested for coronavirus more than once a week as would their family members anyone tested po- testing positive would immediately be quarantined and now let's get to the question you asked let's say your boy Ryan Zimmerman smashes a home run right Ryan Zimmerman launches one out of the park he runs around the dugout he touches home plate Don't you dare hug him. No high fives. No fist bumps. Nothing. Oh, my gosh. No, you have to be able to celebrate with each other. That's like one of the best parts of sports in general. No, I'm I'm guessing there's going to be bowing and curtsies. I don't really know. (laughs) No. So are they going to have to stay six feet apart at all times? They're going to at least not have to touch each other. And it comes with this last one here. No spitting. There will be a ban on chewing tobacco and sunflower seeds. You cannot spit. And I don't know what happens if you do. Like, if you're in the outfield and you spit, is the umpire going to be like, you, you're out of (laughs) here. I saw that. (laughs) Or like what happens? Because it's still going to be, you know, televised. So are they going to have cameras on all the players and just be like, uh oh, that outfielder spit. We just saw Aaron Judge spit. Everyone, Aaron Judge, uh, he's been suspended by Major League Baseball for two weeks for spitting in the outfield when no one else is around him. I have no idea right. what the uh, punishment is if you're caught spitting. Uh, maybe it that just, just means in the dugout. Maybe it just means in the dugout, but it just says no spitting in general. Right. I mean, the, I, I did see a thing online that was saying that baseball is actually a sport where you're six feet apart on the field anyway. A lot, but if yeah. you can't be celebrating with each other and like together as a team, that just takes away so much of it. Yeah. So like, let's could you imagine, right? Let's just use the senators. Let's say something like the Senators Institute, things like this. You're on, you're on the field or right off the field. I mean, right. It's the bottom of the ninth. Senators are down by two or down by one, and then a player for the Senators smashes a two-run homer and wins the game. And then he runs around the bases. Everyone's excited, but no one's touching each other. They're all staying (laughs) six feet apart. He crosses home plate and starts bowing and curtsying. (laughs) Like, how do you even stop that? How do you stop that, that rush? You know, how do you stop that adrenaline? I don't think right, like can. the natural excitement. You can't stop that. And then you're like, okay, well, that's how Major League Baseball is going to do it. And then a, a month and a half later, football opens up and dudes are tackling each other. Right. Yeah, what? How's yeah, that allowed? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how the, any of this is going to work. I really don't. But as someone who works in baseball, as someone who has an amazing love for baseball, I wanted to talk to you about this and get your thoughts on it. Because it just that, this doesn't seem like baseball. You don't want to cancel a season, but do you really want to have this type of season either? 
Right, that's the thing. Like, I would love for it to come back in any way, shape, or form, but it's just not going to feel the same if the guy hits a w- game-winning home run and everybody's standing six feet apart going, good job. <laughs> like, it's just not the same excitement. <laughs> or like, let's say uh, somebody makes a diving catch to end an inning. Right, let's say a pitcher has a no-hitter going. It's a bottom of the eighth, and one of the outfielders makes an amazing catch. And everyone's like, want the hug and high five, but no, they just run back to the dugout and get purelled. Right, and then they go back into the uh, team room, stay six feet apart, and they all leave, yeah. and that's it. What about <laughs> what about the, the bench-clearing brawls? How is that going to work if somebody hits someone with a ball? Right, you can't do that. And another thing, does everyone purell up? Everyone wear gloves? Because think of how many balls get used in one game. Right. Right. So the guy who handles this is weird. The guy who handles the balls uh, brings them out to the umpire. Is that guy wearing gloves? Has that guy been checked? I'm sure he has. Everything's sanitary because all of a sudden there's COVID all over these balls, and they're getting thrown around and batted around, and it just I don't I don't see how either come back or don't. I don't you know what I mean. I don't see, I don't see this working out at all. I see at some point six people on one team getting it. And then they're going to have to reschedule games like rain delays. But instead of rain delays, it's Corona delays. Yeah. I just, I don't see how, like somebody coughs and they cancel the game and bring out the tarp. Right. Right. I feel like it would be a mess. <laughs> be like Ryan Zimmerman just spit on the field. Bring out the tarp. <laughs> game over. That's it. <laughs> Told you not to spit. I don't know how this is going to work, but for baseball fans and baseball players, I hope it does. Uh, coming up in uh, just a couple of minutes. Are you embarrassed by your knowledge or lack thereof? It's the Puff and Steph podcast. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Everyone is going through something right now, and we're all in this together. That's why CBD American Shaman of PA is looking out for you and your health. During this trying time, CBD American Shaman of PA is focused on safety and the needs of their customers. That's why right now they're offering curbside pickup along with home deliveries. Let American Shaman help you manage these stressful times. To find out how to get high-quality CBD products and a free bottle of Shaman Cleansing Gel without even leaving your car or home, visit HempisHealth.com. Hey, honey, how are the taxes going? Pretty good. Let's see. We either get $800 back or we owe four grand. Hmm. I think we should call H&R Block. Let's face it. Taxes can be confusing and the laws seem to change every year. Let the professionals at your local H&R Block take the worry out of your tax season. H&R Block in Dillsburg, Newville, Biglerville, Fairfield, and Gettysburg have been owned by the same family for over 50 years. And they've been there for every tax law change along the way. Don't leave money on the table. File your taxes confidently with H&R Block. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. This is kind of hard to admit if you're one of these people. I might be one of these people. You might be one of these people. I don't know. Two thirds of adults are embarrassed by huge gaps in their knowledge. They blame the choices they made while in education. Languages, history, economics, information technology are among the areas people wish they had more knowledge in. So I ask you, Steph, and we're going to ask you guys on the Puff and Steph Facebook page. What are you lacking in? Like, what's a, what's something that you really wish you knew more and you had the opportunity 
whether in high school or college, you just went a different way. You know, where is your knowledge gap? Two thirds of us are embarrassed by it. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. I, for me, I think it would be science because my weak points tend to be science and math. But despite what all of our high school math teachers told us, <laughs> the Pythagorean theorem does not come up in everyday conversation. But there are like sciencey things that I feel like you can really utilize in the real world, you know? The only time anything in math comes up is when people post equations and stuff on social media. And I'm like, oh, okay. So if three fruit baskets equal 30 that means they're 10 a piece okay and okay so two pairs of shoes plus a fruit basket equals five that, you, <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm talking about you know you, you know the, the things that you know what and while you're on that topic can we stop doing that please because y'all are making <laughs> me feel stupid <laughs> they could stop uh here's here's a tip um a lot of times like if there's a guy, let's say the guy's worth 10 and there's 30 of them. So that means he's worth, you know, 10 or what, you know, there's three of him it equals 30. He's worth 10 and the shoes are worth five. Look in the bottom row. That guy is normally wearing those shoes. Just a heads up. So you're supposed to see that. Nah. -uh. Yeah. Okay. See, I would have never, ever picked up on that in my whole entire life. It's not just math. It's like paying attention to what's in the picture, but right. Math is like, I, I don't, I'm not good at math. I'll be the first one to admit, but you're also a hundred percent right, Steph. I don't use it. Nope. Uh, science. Yeah. It'd be cool if I knew more, but I don't really use it. But I, I just, I feel like things come up more like in nature, like things that you learned in science class come up more often than math, Meh. you know? Meh. I don't know. Probably, but either way. Um, for me, I would want to be better at a subject that I think I could actually use. Don't use math. Don't use science. Sorry. It is what it is. Definitely did not get into a science field for me. It's languages. I did four years of Spanish. I don't remember a damn thing. No, you don't. You're terrible at Spanish. <laughs> I'm so El Bado at Spanish. Muy mal. Muy, muy, muy malo. <laughs> like, I remember little things here and there, but I just... Uh, well, where was I the other day? I was at... Oh, I uh, met a friend of mine for a conversation in, in a Sheets parking lot. I know, sounds creepy and shady. It wasn't. We're just like, hey, what are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? Hey, want to go talk? Yeah, sure. I got there first. Some guys parked next to me and they were two Spanish guys and they got out and they were talking and I like leaned in to see if I could figure out what they're saying. All right, Puff, four years of Spanish. Senorita Sweeting will be very upset if you don't understand at least a word. All right. Okay. I think he said dog. Perro. <laughs> there uh, you go. Um, okay. Yep. That's all I got. Something about a dog. Or maybe they were calling someone a dog. I don't know. I don't know. See, at least you remember that. That's impressive. Yeah, I think for me that would be that and economics. I think if I had a little bit better handle on, because in my economics classes we did a like stock market um, segments and things like that. I just wish I kind of remembered a little bit more of that. But for the most part, it's languages. Yeah, the, the economics would be helpful because I don't understand all that stuff at all. All right, so Steph says that she's got some perplex puff questions. So yes. I just told you I feel stupid when it comes to languages. Let's make me feel more stupid. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, let's do 95% of American millennials are not doing this adequately. Saving money? Actually, yeah, saving for re retirement. Nailed it! Oh, that was so quick. Was that easy? I don't like when don't girls like say that was so quick. So let's just say that was really good. In the future, if this happens again, please don't say, that was so quick. Just say, nice job. Hey, Puff, great job. Thank you. You did good. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, I'll pull up another one I here. Just, that was really quick. I, I just thought of, stop saying that. Uh, that's just... Uh, 
I just put myself in that 95% and went, what am I bad at? Oh, yeah, saving money. Right. Okay, let's do one that's maybe a little bit harder. Oh, great. Now I'm going to feel um, stupid. I should have quit when I was ahead. <laughs> um, one third of adults still do this. Oh, my God. There's so many different ways you can go with this. One third of adults still do this. What did you do as a kid? Um, sleep with the light on? No, but you're in the right ballpark. Sleep with a stuffed animal? Yes! You did! Good job. Okay. Was that really easy? Are these easy? Um, well, I just, I didn't know. I, there's so many different ways. But, I, but right. I start to think, what, see, here's the problem, is I watch you do it so much, and you just, the first thing that comes to your mind, you're like, Bacon! You're just screaming. <laughs> you're just screaming your first answer, and I I like to be a little bit more um, cerebral. I like to th really think like, okay, what did I do as a kid that I don't do now, or do I still do? And I just I I could have done a million things, and for some reason I went down the right path of sleeping. You did well. Aren't you fancy? Not just spitting out whatever first comes to your mind, like me. <laughs> Koala bear. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do another one since those were so quick? Um, oh God, I really. I'm, I'm. Here's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of like doing one that's going to go down this long rabbit hole and be five minutes long and feel stupid. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a good note to end on because you did two of them really well. <sighs> but you're right; they were really quick. Okay, let's do one more. You? Oh, you want to do another one? Let's do one more. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna reg regret this. I know I am. After just talking mad crap about how I'm so cerebral. <laughs> I know you were kind of bragging about your cerebralness. Um, okay. Americans are eating 4.2 billion of these annually. 4.2 potatoes. No. Ooh. Okay. 4.2 billion of these annually. Um, what do people eat a lot of potatoes? Not that, though. Potatoes is a good guess, and you're kind of in the right ballpark. It's a good start. Um, onions? No, but you're still you're still right around the, the right answer. What do people... Lettuce? Heads of lettuce? No. <laughs> uh, carrots? Uh-uh. Grapes. Zoe eats grapes. <laughs> Zoe eats 4.2 million grapes annually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is what this I was is afraid of. <laughs> Uh, this is something you do not eat a lot of. You kind of peppers. Yeah, no. You kind of mock the idea. Kale. <laughs> no, but you're in the right ballpark. I swear. What? What do I mock? I mock so many things. I could give you a hint that'll pretty much give it away. No, so let me know when you're. Don't, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. What do I mock? Do you eat this? Sometimes it's something, yeah, it's something that you would make fun of me for eating. Really? <laughs> I don't like the evil laugh you just put out either. <laughs> Maybe not like make fun of, but um, it, you would have a comment to make. Is there anything I've ever made on Puff's Pantry? No, this is not really up your alley. Par is, it, is it a super health food? Mm hmm. Four, what was the number again? 4.2 billion? 4.2 billion? Is it like edamame? <laughs> no. I'm just thinking of like what's small because that's a lot. So what's small? They're, yeah. like, They're not very big. Like green peas? No, but you're really you're really dancing around the right uh the right area here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man, what could this be? There's different things you can do with them. They're kind of difficult to prepare sometimes. What? Does my wife eat these? Or don't you know? I, I don't know. I've never heard you talk about it, but she would. I think she would. Well, you know it's a plant of some kind. Um, darn it. I should have quit while I was ahead. Um, Br Brussels sprouts? No, but you're on the right color. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what it is. 
Avocados. Nailed it. She loves avocados, by the way. Okay, I wasn't sure. I figured she would as a vegetarian. Uh, I, I don't know why I don't think of avocados. That's so many avocados. I know. How crazy is that? You all have a problem. Oh, my yeah. God. That's insane. I don't eat them that often because I'm too lazy to prepare them, honestly. It's hard. Yeah, they're not worth it. They're No, they're totally not worth it. Okay, friends. All right, we will see you tomorrow. Enjoy your day. It is the Puff and Step Podcast. It's the Puff and Step Podcast.